Hey everyone, I hope everyone is doing well, taking care of yourselves. It has been an intense week. There's a lot going on in the world. And um, what's on my mind this week is <laughs> race. Um, I had a difficult conversation with uh someone in my line of work and I, I hesitate to say difficult because it was difficult for them and I had to educate them about this concept of race that um, is dictates everything in our lives and um you know they're they're just they weren't ready to have that conversation and they came to me thinking that they were ready to have that conversation and they're really really super not so um yeah i i just the title of this episode is you know it's all about race and it really is which is devastating but also um important for people to understand so that they can um move beyond it and unlearn it so let's talk about it So I was having this leading a facilitation session just uh, around, you know, discussing um, like equity and inclusion. And, you know, this person was sort of, you know, speaking about um, that uh, white, the struggling with this concept of white privilege because, you know, they were not a white Christian person and you know they believe that that is the you know like a, I guess a Canadian white person they were you know um, had like a, a like a, a different um, uh, culture so they you know didn't think that whiteness applied to them. So they were like, oh, I don't know, you know, white privilege, white privilege. They struggled with that concept of white privilege. And so, you know, I was like, yeah, um, it's something that you do have. <laughs> that is a thing. Like when we talk about, you know, white privilege, you know, I was, you know, kinder than that. I was like, well, well, let me explain to you what this privilege is. It's your proximity to whiteness and the whiteness that you have you present as white so you have white privilege you know that's that's what it is you know people will see you and you'll have some you know benefit of that you know privilege of being whiteness and etc cetera, etc cetera. so um they were struggling with that concept and um you know so they again <laughs> <laughs> the, the privilege that comes along with that is just, you know, not backing down, not understanding, you know, ev nobody wants to be white until they want to be benefiting from whiteness. You know, it's because, you know, oh, I'm Italian. Oh, I'm this Italian people. And, you know, Canada had a rough time, you know, Polish people had a rough time, all this stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you're talking about stuff that, you know, you're, um, it is, you know, like it just, you know, how is someone looking at you and making these assumptions? And I was like, okay, you know, that's absolutely true. That's, you know, those are true things that did happen. Um, and, um, you know, and, you know, can potentially continue to happen. And, you know, that applies to uh, people as well. So, you know, 
<laughs> this. So, you know, she wouldn't let it go. And so afterward, you know, just um, she's requesting to have a private conversation with me about, you know, trying to really prove to me that she, not, you know, her, her people, but her personally, just does not experience white privilege. You know, like, screw everybody else. I need you, Denise, as a black woman, to give me a stamp of I can go into the world and tell people, like, this is what she's driving at. She's like, wants me to tell her that she can say, yes, I do not have white privilege. She wants that stamp of approval. And so, you know, I was like, um, do you have these conversations with your peers? Like, do you talk about this in your family? Do you talk about this in your home, et cetera, et cetera? And she was like, no, I've never talked about it in my home. And my, and I was like, okay, let's start there. You know, I was just like, I was just not having it. So I was like, let's start there. That's a privilege. That's a privilege that, you know, race like when did you last you, you know you're telling me about this these stories of you know oppression is this like something that it has been told is it a history like has this specifically happened to you did you come home and say yes yeah, someone was you know really discriminatory to me today because i'm you know italian and um yeah no that's hasn't happened to her in her life so i was like so you don't have these conversations. That's a privilege because there are people that look like me that ha have these experiences on the daily that have to talk to their children about the, the world that they live in and they're going to be faced with racism and discrimination simply based on how they look, how to stay safe in this skin. These are things that I, that's part of my reality. That's part, that's going to happen, you know, so that's something that we talk about on the regular. And she was like, oh, well, you know, it's sort of, you know, you know, she's, she's struggling at this point because I've, you know, her first argument, I've already like shot it down. And so the other thing was that I was like, why are you having this conversation with me in particular? You know, of course, I'm like the facilitator of this person. You feel comfortable coming to me to have this conversation because I'm like this educator or because I, I'm going to be sympathetic because you feel like this is a safe space to air your conversation. So and I'm like, that's great that you feel safe to have these conversations, but I'm not going to agree with something that's not true to make you feel better. And so it was, you know, that really tough thing. And so we sort of ended with sort of this, um, this stalemate, because I think um, perhaps if she, you know, she mentioned that, you know, <laughs> again, I was really being tough. And so she did mention that she spoke with another coworker about it. And this coworker I know was black. And, you know, I just was like, it seems like she was just going to the, frankly, the only people of color in the office to sort of prove that, you know, she can do no wrong and she has an out, um, you know, that she's not white. And so I was like, yeah, um, we sort of just ended it with being like, you know, you're on this journey, you know, I want you to think about the things that I've said and, you know, talk, think about, you know, the conversations that you have with your family and um, around these kinds of issues and, you know, maybe talk about, go home and talk with your spouse about it and, you know, sort of start there, just sort of get other people's opinions about it. And she was like, oh, you know, they wouldn't understand. They don't understand. They, they, they don't talk about it. And I'm like, yeah, well, make them understand this is something that they should be talking about. This is something everyone should be talking about. You know, of course, I'm in a professional setting at work, so I can't be like, please just I stop wasting my time. I don't want to talk about someone who is so clueless. So I'm trying to keep my professional voice on, but I was just like, all right, let's wrap it up. And so the thing is this,
I'm not going to give you permission to be ignorant about race and racism because you're a nice person, because you're, you know, we're co-workers or because you, you're, you know, ethnicity is just, you know, not what you define whiteness as. If you present as white, you are going to have some connection to white privilege. You know, I talk about it all the time. It's like that paper bag test, you know, the, the closer you are to white, the more benefits you're going to have of white privilege. It's just, you know, that's what white supremacy does. That's how it works. Uh, read a book and <laughs> don't corner me <laughs> in my office trying to get me to like agree with your wholly ignorant views. It's just not going to work. And so it is a tough concept for people to grasp, but you know, it's the truth. Truth with a capital T. You know, I've had people say, you know, oh, Denise, you always talk about race. Everything's always about race with you. And, you know, uh, white people telling me this. Um, and I'm like, that's, uh, why are you talking to me about this? That's on you. That's your people. Okay. Your people created race to make it all about race. Okay. And it is about race. Everything's about race because that's, what your people did. Race determines who gets to be free, who gets money, who gets our sympathy, who gets access to education and healthcare and, you know, everything. Everything is about race. Don't tell me it's not because it is. tell me something that's not about race, then I will be shocked. Tell me something that's not influenced by race and I will be shocked. You know, show me a place in this world that isn't impacted by white supremacy, by, um, by racism, you know, show me that place and I will go there. <laughs> I will go there quickly. You know, it takes place in you know, people are like, oh, you know, places where there aren't white people, you know, no, there's colorism there, that it, there's, you know, colonization there, there, it's far reaching. It's one of the slowly seeping poisons that has, you know, touched human nature. And it's, 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 it's all about race. It's all about race. It's, it's, um, we need to unlearn this terrible, terrible, terrible concept. It's not doing anybody any good. Well, it's doing, you know, white people good, <laughs> you know, obviously, but it, it not even, I mean, it's damaging them to, to, to have this, belief in your innate superiority. I mean, that's not good for humanity and human beings. Um, so it's, it's such an important concept because it's, you know, I wouldn't say I, it's not real, but it is because it's so powerful. Uh, it needs to be eradicated in all its forms. And, you know, I talk about how, you know, this freedom, who gets to the, the concept of race being invented. So, you know, who gets to be enslaved to make other people rich, you know, it, it had to, you know, come from this dehumanization of human beings and, you know, racism is born and, you know, the 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 lies 
and what it's done. It's so powerful. You know, I talk all the time about how words are powerful and they have the, the power to harm, you know, people will do horrific, horrible things, you know, um, just, you know, recently with, you know, that Muslim child being murdered simply because he's Muslim, you know, racism did that. It's, it, 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 it destroys it's there's when people aren't willing to confront this idea it gives it more power and more hold and that's why i don't have the patience to deal with someone who's willfully ignorant in the fact that racism was created to give white people power and remove it from everybody else. And we see it in everything that you do. If you are paying attention, the lens of white supremacy is in everything. And once you know that once you look for that it's painfully obvious and you know uh, I'm gonna repost one of my favorite podcast episodes that bubble it's called the bubble and you can look for it because I talk about that bubble of ignorance that white people get to live in that privilege that they get to live in and how you know I there's grown people that are like I've never thought of the privilege I have for being white. And I was like, that is a privilege. (laughs) That in itself is a privilege that you don't even have to grapple with these concepts that the world was designed and built for you, that you're untouched by even the concept of race. You can just be yourself, an individual. There are no limitations on you. That's freedom. That's the freedom I'm talking about that doesn't exist for me. So I'm going to end this episode with a question I (laughs) asked one of my friends um, when we were having this conversation, you know, when I, because I I truly, truly believe that, you know, our society has been shaped by racism and, you know, the classification of human beings. Um, And so, you know, when I talk about, you know, the health care that, you know, black women receive, the health care that indigenous people receive, you know, it's impacted by racism. You know, we've seen that recently with people, you know, not being properly diagnosed, Um, you know, just about the jobs that people get, the way people perceive me, you know, um, just everything's been, you know, been, been touched by it, how people perceive, you know, him as a white man. So I was like, yeah. And I said, name something that hasn't been impacted by race, you know, name it. And, um, I, pose that question to you as well as the audience listener um name something so uh that was i'll tell you that that was four years ago that i posed that question to him and i'm still waiting for an answer 
Thank you so much for listening and I will talk to you next time.